Before we start the stories of our historical entomologists, we want to spotlight some resources for entomologists of all ages. Entomologists of Color, or EntoPOC, is an organization founded to provide paid membership to professional societies like the Entomological Society of America, Entomological Collections Network, and others that provide mentorship and networking opportunities to connect with other scientists around the world. They also highlight a scientist of the month and provide additional resources for inclusive practices. Hashtag Black and Ento is a week highlighting and supporting Black entomologists, following in the steps of events like Hashtag Black Birders Week and Hashtag Black and Marine Science to increase visibility and representation of Black scientists in these fields of studies. It runs from February 22nd to 26th, and is also holding a fundraiser for scholarships, so please check it out. The International Association of Black Entomologists was founded to provide a point of connection for black scientists from around the world, from all origins and nationalities, and is an affiliate of the Entomological Society of America. This book of memoirs, published by the ESA in 2015 as a collection of inspiring memoirs of established black entomologists talking about their journey to the field of insect scientists. Entomologists are listed in alphabetical order, and this is by no means a comprehensive list of all the incredible scientists out there. We'd like to sincerely thank everyone who participated. Dr. Jessica Ware is an entomologist who studies insect evolution. She mostly works on dragonflies and damselflies, but also on termites, which are social cockroaches. She uses the morphology, or the appearance, of the insects along with genetic and genomic information from their DNA to find clues about their evolutionary history. As a curator at the American Museum of Natural History, Ware is responsible for this research but also for growing and maintaining the collections of insects stored in the museum. There are over 23 million specimens in the American Museum of Natural History's collection, and she is responsible for overseeing the non holo metabolous insects. These are the insects that do not have complete metamorphosis. Things like dragonflies, true bugs, stoneflies, praying mantises, and mayflies. Ware is also responsible for the basal hexapoda, which are the group that is sister to the winged insects. Dr. Ware is the first African-American woman to be curator at the American Museum of Natural History. She is active in her scientific societies, serving as the president of the World Dragonfly Association and in the president line for the Entomological Society of America. In 2020, she started a nonprofit, Entomologists of Color, entopoc.org, which works to diversify entomology. Among other things, they provide free memberships to any entomological society in the world for students of color. Entomology is for everyone, and the field is such an exciting one to work in. Dr. Ware has new and exciting field work planned for most summers and has been able to travel a lot, collecting samples for her work and meeting people from around the world. There are more insects than almost any other organism, and we need more entomologists to describe this amazing diversity before it goes extinct. Join us! Her favorite insect is a dragonfly, and if she had to pick just one, it would be Aishna Kananidnis. Her advice for young learners? Contact EntoPOC and scientific societies local to you, as most have programs for entomologists of all ages. Dr. Mamadou Setemou received his Bachelor of Science 
in agronomy from the National University of Benin Republic and a Master of Science in Crop Science from the University of Cape Coast, Ghana in West Africa. He obtained his PhD from the University of Hanover, Germany in 1999, majoring in agricultural entomology. Soon after, he joined the Department of Entomology at Texas A&M University as a postdoctoral fellow. In 2002, he joined the International Center of Insect Ecology and Physiology in Nairobi, Kenya as a senior scientist and project coordinator working on biological control of Lepidorian stem borers in eastern and southern Africa. From 2003 to 2005, he has worked as a research scientist in the Agricultural Research Services United States Department of Agriculture in Weslaco, Texas, before joining the Texas A&M University Kingsville as an assistant professor of citrus entomology in 2006. Seth Tamu is currently a professor of entomology and interim director of the Texas A&M University Kingsville Citrus Center based in Weslaco, Texas. In his current capacity, he provides leadership to the center's research portfolio and in charge is in charge of the Citrus IPM program in the state of Texas. IPM is Integrated Pest Management. Professor Satimu's research is on the development of sustainable management strategies for insect and mite pests affecting citrus production. Professor Setamu is a highly productive scientist, as evidenced by his prolific research papers. As of February 2021, Professor Setamu has authored and co-authored over 120 peer-reviewed papers and six book chapters in insect ecology, biological control, and integrated pest management. Setamu has trained 37 master's students, three PhD postgraduate students, and four postdoctorate fellows. Professor Setamu is the current president of the International Association of Black Entomologists. Outside academia, Setamu is heavily involved in developmental projects for rural communities in his native Benin. The various projects he implements spans from providing clean water to assisting with irrigation systems and pest management in community gardens. Joseph Saunders' curiosity with microfauna began about the age of five. Sparked by the green anole, Anolis carolina pinus, growing up in San Antonio, Texas, they are quite literally everywhere, and as a person with a lifelong mobility limitation, their abundance afforded him a gift he will never take for granted. Despite his appreciation for wildlife, Saunders didn't become a photographer until about seven years ago when some friends suggested they go field herping or looking for lizards, snakes, and amphibians. One afternoon, he was photographing a western rat snake, Pantheropolis obsolutus, while a friend was handling it and managed to get a clear image of the rat snake postured defensively with its mouth agape. It was from that moment he wondered what other dramas in the natural world he might find if he only looked. Sanders later acquired a, mic a macro lens with the belief it would improve his photography of herps and soon realized he could fix this lens on much smaller animals. This opened the door to an even greater diversity of fauna in locations much more accessible to someone who permanently uses a wheelchair. Saunders' first love may have been herpetology. However, his love of entomology grows with each passing year. If his relationship with the natural world has afforded him with any worthwhile information, it is to be in constant practice of appreciation for all that is within reach. Perhaps more importantly, with the global decline of the biomass of arthropods, it is more important than ever to foster an appreciation for those life forms and to help preserve them. Arthropod diversity is a pillar nearly every ecosystem is built upon. To defend them is an act of self-preservation. Michelle Samuel Fu joined Alabama State University in January 2018 as an assistant professor engaged in teaching and research. She was promoted to Director of Specialty Crop Research in August 2020 and is currently charged with leading the university's research initiative surrounding industrial hemp entomology. Dr. Samuel Fu attended the University of Georgia for graduate school where she completed her PhD in entomology and also earned an MS degree in agronomy plant breeding and genetics. She also holds a BA in biology, summa cum laude, from Bruton Parker College in Mount Vernon, Georgia. 
After graduate school, Dr. Samuel Fu joined the University of Florida as a faculty member in the Institute of Food and Agricultural Services. At University of Florida, she spent 10 years working in specialty crop pest management and served as the regional coordinator for the USDA NIFA federally funded IR4 minor use program whose mission it is to procure sustainable pest management tools for growers of specialty crops. In terms of professional service, Dr. Samuel Fu has served as a two-term president of the International Association of Black Entomologists and is the current president-elect of the Southeastern Branch of the Entomological Society of America. She is very active within her professional society and has served on several committees, including the Education Student Awards and the ESA Common Names Committee. She currently serves as the SEB Branch Representative to the Diversity and Inclusion National Committee of ESA. She delivered the 2020 ESA Founders Memorial Lecture, which honored the legacy of USDA ARS entomologist, Dr. Ernest Harris. At ASU, Michelle's research program focuses on industrial hemp, specialty crops, and urban gardening. She recently spearheaded an initiative to develop an urban teaching garden on the campus, including a 5,000 square foot modern day greenhouse, the purpose of which is to introduce minority students to entomology and sustainable agriculture. On a personal note, Michelle is an avid fitness enthusiast. Outside of the university, when she isn't mothering her three sons, she can be found at the gym or in the garden. As far as her favorite insect, it's so hard for her to choose just one. So her favorite insects would include the green lace wings, mantis flies, and cocino lids. Her advice, never stop being curious. Always engage in scholarship and to align yourself with a mentor who exemplifies what you would like to do in the future. Choose friends wisely. Look for like-minded individuals so that you can embark on the road of discovery together. And remember that when one door closes, it doesn't mean the end of an opportunity, but rather a segue to another. She is one of the editors of Memoirs of Black Entomologists, and her autobiographical memoir is included as well, helping to increase the visibility and recognition of black scientists working in entomology. Dr. Ramsey's interest in entomology has been going strong for 24 years. He's loved insects ever since he overcame an irrational fear of them as a young child. From then on, he was excited to tell anyone who would listen, I am going to be an entomologist when I grow up, which is apparently quite odd to hear from a seven-year-old African-American kid. Turns out, he was a trustworthy narrator. Dr. Ramsey received his doctorate in entomology from the University of Maryland in 2018 and has been working at the United States Department of Agriculture since then as a research fellow. He wanted to find a way for his lifelong fascination with insect symbiosis to help solve real-world problems, so it's no surprise that he now works for the Bee Research Lab studying parasites of honeybees. His research has helped us understand the complex parasite-host relationship at the heart of honeybee health decline, and it's given us new hope to do something about it. In all of this focus on honeybees, they have even started to rival the unparalleled coolness of praying mantids, which once went uncontested as his all-time favorite insect. For aspiring entomologists, Dr. Ramsey's advice would be never fight curiosity. Curiosity is a virtue and an asset that will take you to some incredible places if you're willing to follow it. Our progress in science is only bounded by our willingness to continue asking, why? So go where that question takes you. When the experiment doesn't work, ask why. When the tools you need to do your work haven't been invented yet, ask why. And even if your challenge is that other researchers are telling you that you don't belong in your field for one reason or another, keep asking why. Grad school often ends equipping students to endlessly question themselves, but often doesn't encourage them to question the systems that generate complacency with familiar but unhelpful answers. Stay curious. Kyla O'Hare is an insect systematist and taxonomist studying fruit flies at Cornell University. 
She started off in animal science and quickly discovered that insects are way cooler than vertebrates. She works in the insect collection of Cornell and conducts her research on Hawaiian fruit flies. While some fruit flies can be invasive crop pests, like the one studied by Dr. Ernest Harris, O'Hearn is working to document how many types of nat native Hawaiian fruit flies there are and give suggestions on how to conserve those populations. Her favorite insects are lacewings and antlions. The larvae of these amazing creatures look so different from the adults and tend to be voracious predators, whereas the adults hardly, or don't, eat anything. Her advice to young learners? Anyone can be an entomologist, if you have the passion for it. Continue working on your craft and reach out to experts in the field, like her. Visit your local university or museum and ask if they have an insect collection. Learn how to pen and preserve your specimens and practice identifying them. You'll be an expert before you know it. Dr. Joseph Munyaneza was born and raised on a small farm in Rwanda, and because of his high academic scores, was fortunate to be selected to attend one of the few high schools in the surrounding region. He continued his education at the National University of Rwanda, earning both a bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Rwanda, and taught for several years inspiring the next generation of students to continue in the sciences. Muneza continued his studies in the United States with a research fellowship to attend Southern Illinois University in Carbondale for a second master's degree, and then moved on to earn a PhD from Iowa State University with a digital research in Minnesota on a variety of crop pests. While a research scientist entomologist at the Agricultural Research Service Wapato in Washington, Dr. Joseph Munyaneza's research focused on insects transmitting pathogens, diseases to potato and other vegetable crops. Insect vectors included aphids, leaf hoppers, and psyllids. Pathogens included viruses, bacteria, especially Librobacter, photoplasmas, and spiroplasmas. His disease included zebra chip potato disease caused by the Libobacter and transmitted by psyllids, and potato purple top disease caused by photoplasmas and transmitted by leafhoppers. Because of his expertise in these areas, he traveled the world, especially in New Zealand and Mexico, to address potato disease issues. Dr. Munyaneza is recognized nationally and internationally for his research on insect-transmitted plant diseases, particularly leafhopper and psyllid-transmitted phytoplasmas and bacteria. He has authored over 130 publications and presented his research at over 100 different professional institutions and conferences with awards from the Entomological Society of America. He served as vice president from 2007 to 2009 and president from 2011 to 2013 of the International Organization of Black Entomologists, which was started over 20 years ago to help black scientists forge connections and support each other in their work. His favorite insect is the potato psyllid, and his advice is hands-on experience is important in both academia and private industry. Dr. Gloria Sanders McCutcheon's work as an entomologist involves studying alternatives to chemical control of insect pests on plants. From soybean to cotton to vegetable crops, her concern has always been to promote conservation of the environment. When she had the opportunity to conduct research at Clemson University using insect parasitoids to help regulate pest insects, it was amazing. Each day was filled with excitement, whether she was collecting insects from the field crops, observing them in the laboratory, or preserving them for further identification at the Smithsonian. Along the way, she began to share her passions with children and realized how entomology can expand their learning opportunities in STEM. Many would comment after her presentation that they thought that they did not even like insects, and now they see insects are cool. Dr. McClutchin began to travel to places like Cuba and Zimbabwe and Costa Rica and saw how children there were so involved in the production of their food. That gave her a greater desire to help promote interest in food production among children in the U.S and particularly in communities of color where food deserts often exist and the social economic status of most does not allow for long trips to the grocery store. Today, she advises students in public health at Claflin University 
the historical black college and is addressing some of the issues related to infectious diseases like West Nile virus, as well as chronic diseases, diabetes, cancer, and the food that we eat. She also serves as principal investigator of a National Institute of Health grant in the National Institute of General Medical Sciences, where she ensures that students who are interested in her research can be directed to a suitable mentor and complete internships in whatever area of science they choose. One such student recently completed her internship at the University of Florida Medical Entomology Laboratory. Dr. McClutchen's favorite insect is a tiny brachinoid wasp. The wasp is so important to crop production with the ability to kill about 100 pest caterpillars before pests can do significant feeding or destroy a plant. While C. marganiventris is barely visible to the naked eye, it spends part of its life inside the caterpillar itself and part as a free-living adult, consuming plant nectar and searching for pest caterpillars to deposit eggs so they can develop and then eventually emerge from and kill the pest. Both of her daughters knew how to pronounce Gotessa Marganaventris before they were two years old, and to this day, they still refer to Gotessa Marganaventris from time to time as their work intersects food systems. One is a college professor in geography, and one is a lawyer. Her advice to young learners? Follow your passions, even if it's the road less traveled. Work will seem like a hobby if you enjoy it. Dr. Alex Harmon Threat is an ecologist focusing on native bee populations. She started off as a pre-med student at Washington University, but happened to see an advertisement for ecology research which changed her entire career direction. As she studied invasive plants in the internship, she found herself wondering what the insect relationship was with the new species. In her senior year, she was awarded a fellowship to the National Soci Science Foundation Graduate Research Fellowship Program at Berkeley and continued studying how introduced plants became integrated into a native bumblebee's diet. Beyond graduate school, Dr. Harmon Threat expanded her studies to include the whole community of bees that contribute to the environment and is now a professor of entomology at the University of Illinois, a job that she didn't even think to consider as an undergraduate. Her favorite insect is the Aga post amon virescens. It's a bright metallic native bee and helps people see the diversity in bee fauna very plainly. It's great for teaching about what she does. Insects are critical to ecosystems, but often overlooked or maligned. Without them, dead bodies would pile up, many flowers would cease to exist, and diversity of our whole world would be different. Despite this, we know so little about most insects. There's a ton of room to explore, but weirdly, we have some excellent model systems too that puts us way ahead of understanding some parts of insects than we are for other organisms. So you have a strong starting point and a lot to explore. What else could a scientist want? Plus, the best thing about studying insects is they're everywhere, just about. You can design a full study in your backyard if you wanted to, get, wanted to and get publishable results. That means entomology is for everyone. There are so many questions still unanswered about insects that students can make a real and important impact on the world. Representation is essential. If you don't see people like you in the jobs that you want to do, it can be hard to visualize yourself doing it. It is also so important to advocate for internships and research opportunities that are paid and accessible to students of all backgrounds, because taking a summer off and working for free is not an option for many undergraduates. In order to make the opportunities equitable, internships need to be funded in a way that reflects that need. Samuel de Grey grew up in Palmdale, California, where there were few biologists or life scientists to interact with. He fell in love with insects from a young age and knew that he wanted to spend his life learning more about them. He would check out every book from the local library and started his first insect collection with a piece of cardboard, a plastic container, and a bunch of sewing needles from his mom's sewing kit. He went to undergrad at Humboldt State University, and while his academic studies started off rocky, he knew that he needed to improve to fulfill his goals. DeGray worked as hard as he could to come back and reached out to offer help to anyone at the school who was involved with entomology. By the end of his studies, he graduated as an honor student, 
His main line of inquiry had been evolutionary biology of insects and has had the opportunity to work in the American Museum of Natural History in New York City, working on the evolution of mosquito mouth parts and the evolution of scales in primitive insects. Samuel de Grey recently completed his master's degree in entomology at UW-Madison, studying the evolution of cold tolerance in spotted wing Drosophila. He is thankful for the opportunities that he's had to work with insects and enjoys many hobby entomology activities like insect collecting, insect watching, and insect rearing. His favorite insect? Well, de Grey will never be able to pick a favorite, but some that have been fascinating over the years have been any insect that makes galls, leaf mining insects, silverfish, jumping bristletails, and the twisted wing insects. He has a soft spot for obscure enigmatic groups, but generally loves all insects. Well, except the invasive European honeybee. His advice to students? If possible, visit a real entomology lab at a university or an agricultural lab like USDA. The work of an average entomologist in the modern day may look different than what you'd expect, and it's good to get a realistic view of the opportunities and type of work that many people are doing to know what to expect. Also, start an insect collection. It gives you a close understanding and appreciation of insects and is a pretty cheap hobby that you can do anywhere at almost any time. If the idea of killing insects bothers you, start a virtual collection using websites like iNaturalist that just require taking pictures and you can still contribute to science. Andrea Darby's introduction into biological research started when she was a pre-nursing major at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. But in a semester she was applying to nursing school, she switched directions to be a biology major. In 2016, Darby was selected to be a Ronald E. McNair Scholar, where she did independent research in Dr. Alan Gibbs' evolutionary physiology lab to study the impact of gut bacteria on dehydration survival in fruit flies, Drosophila melanogaster. She was awarded an NSF EPSCOR grant that further enabled her to pursue her research. After graduating in 2018, she became an NIH post bachelorette research education program scholar at the University of Kansas. There, she worked with Dr. Rob Uneklis studying the evolution of the fruit fly immune system and how the fly microbiota influences their ability to survive starvation. As an undergrad, Drea Darby participated in Cornell's Diversity Purview Weekend, which is a program that strives to include students historically excluded from the fields of entomology and ecology and evolutionary biology at Cornell. At this event, she met her current PhD advisor, Dr. Brian Nazaro. Currently, Drea is a PhD student in the field of entomology at Cornell University, working to understand how environmental factors like diet impacts their immune system in fruit flies. She has been awarded the Ford Foundation Predoctoral Fellowship, whose mission it is to increase the racial and ethnic diversity of university faculty in the U.S., as well as being a Cornell Dean Scholar. As a Cornell graduate student, she serves as a co-organizer of the DPW event that originally brought her to this university. Her favorite insect to study is, no surprise, Drosophila flies but she also adores leafcutter ants. And her advice to young learners who are interested in entomology as a career? Well, she has so many, so here are just her top three. First, don't stop applying for opportunities, even if you think that you don't qualify. Apply yourself to as many opportunities that you have the bandwidth to do, because they can open the door up to so many possibilities. Two, mentorship and networks are so important. Even having mentors that don't look like you or have the same cultural background as you can set you up for the next stage of your professional development. It is extremely impactful though to seek mentors that have similar lived experiences as you and most people are welcoming to take you on as their mentee. And three, asking questions or asking for help does not make you dumb or weak. It can help you get unstuck faster than if you were to do it alone, and it is not a poor reflection on your character for reaching out. Willie White Brian was first inspired to study insects after reading a paper on mayflies and their fascinating life cycles. She initially didn't study entomology, 
earning degrees in social science and advanced degrees in history before returning to her interests in insects. She has had an extensive career of working in biological control, first in the United States Department of Agriculture, using beneficial insects to control insect pests in cotton, corn, and soybeans. She later worked on developing the first kit for diagnosing insect pests, definitively identifying the cotton bullworm and tobacco budworm while they were still eggs. Her next entomological endeavor was managing the Pesticide Alternatives Laboratory in the Department of Entomology at Michigan State University, which developed alternatives to chemical pesticides for fruit trees like apples and cherries. Her favorite insects are the ones she spent most of her career studying, endoparasitic braconid wasps, Microplytus rutiventris, and Microplytus crocepus. She is one of the editors of Memoirs of Black Entomologists, and her autobiographical memoir is included as well, helping to increase the visibility and recognition of Black scientists working in entomology. Her advice to students? Stay committed, keep your passions, work hard. It is important to foster interest in entomology and the sciences at an early age. Thank you all for listening to the stories of these scientists, who are just a few of the many entomologists of color working in the field and in the lab. The world of insects is incredibly diverse, and we wouldn't have it any other way.